Welcome back for more AP Biology. Today we're going to continue our talk of the big shifts and everything, speciation. In particular, this one is going to deal with our second round of the evidence. In particular, this is going to deal with our second round of evidence for evolution. So, evidence for evolution, two. So we're going to look for what's in common with all of life. And this turns out to be the exact same set of things that you got at the start of the year. So what evidence could you give from the start of the year? Well, we could talk about fossils. We could talk about anatomical structures. We could talk about geological locations or geographic locations. We could talk about behaviors. We could talk about things along those lines, the big, easy things that we can add, because that's all stuff that we've added from at the start of the year. But what else could we add since the start of the year? Well, we could talk about cells. If I look at cells, cells are basically the same everywhere. Yeah, they might look different, they might have different parts, but they're basically the same. They have cytoplasm, genetic information, ribosomes, and a membrane made out of phospholipids for the most part. I say for the most part because you can have variations on what those phospholipids look like. But whenever I look at cells, that's what they're all going to turn out to be. If I look at prokaryotic cells, they seem to have certain types of shape. If we look at archaeans, they have a certain type of build, and the eukaryotes have a certain type of structure. We have things in common between all of these things, between all these different types of organisms. We can find common cellular structures between us, bacteria, the grass that's growing outside, and plasmodium that's causing malaria. We can find things in common, which is either a massive coincidence or it's not. I can look at pathways, chemical pathways. So how DNA replicates, or how we go through transcription or translation, or something as simple as glycolysis, which is this. ED stands for the original version of it, and I can never remember. It's like Ebmeyer or something or rather for the pathway. But this is glycolysis. If you look, bacteria basically go through what we do they have slight, a slight variation on it, but for the most part, the parts are pretty close to being the same. If we look at us, we have a pathway that's very similar to this, and if I look at archaea, they have a pathway very similar to us. Well, why are these pathways the same? Either it's a coincidence or it's not. I can look at proteins, and if I look at structures of proteins, the way that we build glucose transporter is very similar to the, how a plant would build a glucose transporter. Or if I look at the way that ATP synthase is built, it actually turns out to be similar to a rotor found on bacteria, which is strange because they both spin and they both utilize ATP or they both utilize, more importantly, a proton gradient. So either this is a massive set of coincidences or they're not. Or I can look at genes. I can look at different groupings of organisms, and I can find genes in common between all of these organisms. So the fact that there are genes in common between organisms could either be a massive coincidence or it's not. For the sake of pointing out, right here it says LUCA. LUCA is a very famous organism. We don't know what LUCA is, but it's famous. It's called the last universal common ancestor. And it's something that a lot of people are trying to figure out. Well, how does this fit into the big picture? The big picture is what we call part is existence. And I can have all of these disparate parts that are either independent events that somehow fit together into this thing that we call life. Or if I take something very simple, simple components like these I don't remember what gene this turns out to be, so I apologize. But if I start looking at different organisms, so archaeans, yeast, fruit flies, and us, if I look at certain genes that show up everywhere, if you look at this figure, there turns out to be something in common between them all. So these pieces that are in common, either it's a coincidence or it's not. Coincidences in the world of science, you need to have an explanation. You need to figure out a way to explain why there's a coincidence. The easiest way to explain it is to say 
they're all related to each other, and all we've done is tinkered with it along the way. That follows the principle of parsimony. The easiest explanation is it's not a coincidence. Because the harder explanation is how do we make these millions of different things similar to each other?